Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. I'm very excited today because we have a very special guest on our show today. We have Robert Brill, and he is a excellent entrepreneur. He's been in the marketing uh, field for over 25 years. Uh, he's been doing this a very long time. He has a very successful agency and he's here to talk about different aspects about marketing, about different ways to reset your minds your, and, and ways to succeed, to go from one component and to go to the level of success and elevate your, your business as we go along. Now, before we begin, I just want to get, give a quick shout out to our sponsors. They are the Happy Wellness Expo. They're going to be doing an expo in Livingston, New Jersey, and they are going to have top quality products and services for your health and well-being. They're going to have over 100 national and local um, uh, people and, and uh, at the show that are going to be at tables, and they are going to uh, interact and give away a lot of free things. So check it out. It's going to be Saturday, March 23rd at 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. We're going to put all the information in there. So if you are local or even if you are um, at, at a distance, these expos are really beneficial and something that you might want to look into. So check it out, the Happy Wellness Expo. So Robert, tell me um, a little about yourself and what you do. Thanks, Stacey. Um, I'm Robert Brill. I'm the CEO of Brill Media. We're an advertising firm and you know, we know really well how to grow businesses using social advertising, search, Hulu, Roku. If it's digital advertising, we do it. I've been uh, the the owner and CEO of the business for the last 10 years. I've grown it and bootstrapped it myself. And then prior to that, uh, 10 years prior to that, I started working in marketing and advertising, um, working at agencies all across the country. And I'm um, really happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. You know, you had mentioned some great topics that I wanted to talk about. One of the things you had mentioned was mindset. One of the things that are very important for a successful business is having a good mindset. Can you talk a little about that and tell us a little more in depth about the importance of mindset and maybe some tips on how to develop that strong mindset to develop success and move towards that area of that positive path where you have, you can achieve the level that you want to achieve. Absolutely. Um, the big learning was when I went from employee to entrepreneur, I'd spent 10 years working in advertising and I knew I wanted to start my agency, but there's so many things I didn't know how to do. And I didn't think minds, I didn't know about mindset. It wasn't really on my radar. Yeah. Until I realized that, you know, in talking to a lot of people, a lot of successful entrepreneurs and business owners, that that's the main thing that speaks to whether or not you can be successful. Right. You have the ability to get up when you get figuratively punched in the face and life doesn't give you what you're what you're ultimately looking for. When you're starting a business, for example, you know, people have a vision of how they're going to grow the business. And it's usually far more expensive and far more time consuming than you originally think. And the result of that is you get upset, you get frustrated, there's anxiety. And, you know, there are a lot of things I did to become, you know, to strengthen my mindset. Um, right. And I think a few of them are, I had to learn how to sell, you know, uh, when I'm empowered, I feel much more comfortable talking about the things I, I, I feel passionate about. So yeah. earlier in my career, I learned, how to talk in meetings because that was a source of anxiety. And to do that, I learned, I went to Toastmasters for nine months and I, and I became far more comfortable talking in front of people. At the time I was, a, you know, at the time I went to Toastmasters, I was about 29 years old and I was in meetings with people in their fifties and sixties who are very, very, very experienced in the advertising business. And I just couldn't confidently talk about what I needed to talk about. Right. So well, fast forward to when I started my business in 2013, um, that was a skill that I really needed to rely on because when you're starting a business, you need to inspire and motivate people to buy from you. So yes. I spent two years talking to people to understand product market fit, to get comfortable that I had something that people wanted. Right. So when we talk about mindset, it's really the ability to get up when when you're pushed down and to succeed in the face of, of challenges. It's about right. grit, determination, and the ability to succeed against the odds. Right. So 
2013, um, started the business. Um, and there were a few things I didn't, I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to sell. There were big financial risks in the advertising business. And, um, I was really worried about how I would, um, accomplish all that. But, you know, we, we were able to kind of like learn from the mistakes that we had. And the mistakes were like, I didn't know how to sell. The mistakes were, I didn't have a hundred thousand dollars. For example, if we run a campaign for a hundred thousand dollars, we're usually fronting that money and yeah. then we get paid on the back end. I didn't have the money to front. Right. So rather than trying to, you know, I tried a few different ways. I tried to not do the business that I'm doing. I tried to do a social media marketing company. I tried to be an influencer. I tried to sell influencer marketing. I tried to do consulting. But what I realized is my zone of genius is in this work of digital advertising. And once I focused on my zone of genius and I realized that there's no way around the big challenges of the business, there was only through. The only way I could succeed was I had to figure out how to sell. Yes. I had to figure out how to take big financial risks. There was no other way around it because I tried it and failed at all the other ways of trying to yeah. go around that, those big challenges. And once I focused on really getting the business to be focused around my zone of genius, that's when we started to scale. And then we had challenges along the way. There was one moment, you know, it felt challenging to hire my very first full-time person because yeah. it felt like a big financial risk, even though right. it really wasn't looking back on it. Um, another challenge that we had is when we went from two people to seven people over a summer, the people we had hired, no one was happy. I wasn't happy. They right. weren't happy with their jobs. And what I learned is that there's this thing called standard operating procedure. And it's a list of, of steps that people take that empowers them to understand where their work starts and where it stops. Yeah. And through that empowerment, people start to understand what it takes for them to be successful in their role. Their anxiety level drops. They become far happier in their role. They yeah. stay in the business longer. The work becomes more consistent. Clients are happier. The business grows. And so from that moment when we discovered and implemented standard operating procedures, it really gave us a clearing to grow to multiple millions of dollars in revenue consistently and have um, a much larger team than we had at the time. Um, so these are lessons that I learned along the way. But fundamentally, what businesses need are predictable, repeatable, and scalable business growth. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we help businesses achieve that with our advertising. And there are kind of like three general lessons to understand about the marketing and advertising business in 2024. The first is that the algorithms on TikTok, the, the, the advertising algorithms on TikTok, on Google, on Meta, they've become a black box. Mm -hmm. If you're on Meta, Facebook and Instagram, and you're targeting a bunch of granular keywords or interests, or even doing lookalike or uh, retargeting ads, those ads, Google, I'm sorry, Meta doesn't want you to work that way on their platform. What they want and what we've been doing for our clients for a few years now is the following, targeting age, gender, and location. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a restaurant in New Jersey and your location area is going to be like five miles around the address because that's how far people are going to drive yeah. to go to your restaurant. But right. if you're a, a B2B services company like mine is, we can s sell with people all across all across the United States. So our audience right. is across the United States. And what you're doing by targeting this broad targeting setup is you are training Meta's algorithm, their AI, to find your best customers. So by giving it a broad scope of people to target, Meta will have a better opportunity to find your best customers. And how do they know who your customers are? It's by understanding the contents of the ads. The mm -hmm. primary text at the top, the image or video in the middle, and the headline at the bottom. The contents, the words in the in the contents of the imagery, tell Meta who should be seeing those ads. They're really good at finding the right people. Right. And so the way we run ads on Meta is broad targeting. We do a, a series of creative tests monthly with control and variable testing. And at the end of the month, we become smarter about who your customers are. The algorithm, more importantly, the algorithm becomes smart about who your customers are. And you start to understand which products and services, offers and discounts, and even audiences are really interested in your product or service. Right. Another example of that is in Google. 
Google, when you run CPC or uh, keyword ads um, targeting a specific market or specific searches, you are highlighting, you are uploading 15 different headlines and four different descriptions. And Google is going to um, combine them in ways that they think is relevant for your audience. Right. So that's another example of algorithmic targeting. Also on Google, you have performance max, which is, you know, you just upload a bunch of assets, images, and videos, and your ads can appear on YouTube, on Google search, on Gmail, a bunch of different places. And then finally, you have TikTok with its smart ads. And again, you're targeting broad audiences and TikTok is going to find the people who are most, uh, that will resonate the most with your messages. Right. So in 2024, advertising is about broad targeting, letting the algorithm do its thing so that it can find your best audiences. The next component that of like the trends in advertising in 2024 are full funnel advertising. The idea is... You really don't want to, as a business that's running advertising, you really don't want to compare your Google ads to your meta ads. They're not opponents. They work in, in sync in, in, they work together as a, as pieces of an orchestra to create a symphony. Right. They work to gre together to build your business. So for example, now let's add Hulu to the mix on connected television ads. Right. If you run Hulu ads, if you compare Hulu to Google ads, Hulu will never look as good as driving leads and sales as Google. Right. Because Hulu is good at getting people to understand who your business is and what they do, what your business yeah. does, and to and, and know what your services are. Right. Then people search for your business and then they convert. They buy off of a Google search or organic search engine optimization on Google. Right. But if you compare them, you're going to say Hulu's not so good. Google is better. Let's turn off Hulu. And what you've just done if you turn off Hulu is you end up suffocating the top of the funnel such that in a few months, you're going to have far fewer searches and then your Google ads will start to perform less effectively. Right. So we advocate for a full funnel approach that advertising channels are, are members of the orchestra that create the symphony that grow your business. The last component of this ultimately is going to be strategy. Yeah. Whenever you're running an advertising campaign, you don't want to just run ads. Like on Facebook, you don't want to just boost. Boosting is the worst thing you can do on Facebook for a number of different reasons. It's the way that Facebook makes billions of dollars off <laughs> of small businesses yep. that think they're in the game, but they're not even optimizing to the right thing. You don't want likes, comments, and shares or no. reach. You want sales. You need leads and sales for your business. You need to keep your accounting team busy. So you want a strategy and the strategy helps you understand what you should do as a, as a result of your goals. Where yeah. do you want to be in a year or five years with your business? How many sales do you need? How many customers do you need? And then it takes a look at your, the customer transformative value. Why do people buy from you? What's the yeah. transformation that customers get when they buy from you? Right. Um, it looks at your prior marketing and advertising efforts. And the fundamental idea here is you take a sophisticated look at your entire business, including the economics, like how what's the value of a sale to you? Right. Put all of that together. And then you work with a company like mine and we say, look, based on everything you're trying trying to accomplish, you should allocate 30 of your percent of your budget on I'm making it up meta, 30% on Google, and 30% on Hulu and then 10% on TikTok, let's say. Right. And then we look at the data as an ongoing process to understand what that data tells us and what you're seeing on the back end of your business because we ultimately care about keeping your accounting team busy. Anything else is not worth it. Likes, yeah. comments, shares, video views, and clicks. Those are, are not the metrics you want to look at if you yeah. care about growing a business. So we covered a lot, but that's that's where we are. I think you just gave a whirlwind of information because I think a lot of people, you know, don't realize they get kind of swiped away into the like you just said, the likes, the you know, um, the thumbs up, and all those little icons they give, and they're looking at the metrics to see, you know, you know how many people are liking me and clicking me and. And it's not it's not about that when you're you're running a business and you're making sales. You want to 
like you said, you want to go go through the funnel and you want to pre- you want to um, project sales. That's the goal. You know, you want to convert, you know, that's the main thing is conversion. And, you know, it's it, a, a lot of people, they get too caught up on going on to these social medias and seeing how many people are looking at me, how many people are liking me, how many people are joining my, my page and my channel. And it's not about that. It's like, how many of those people are actually converting and becoming a part of your, your uh, team, your client, your, 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 and, and with, you know, and having that retentive business where they, you know, they keep using you over and over and over again. Cause I think that's the key too, is you don't want them just once purchasing something. You want them consistently purchasing your services. And, and, and I think, you know, that's one key, I think. And then you probably, you probably have to, you know, from my own experience, you kind of got to tweak it consistently, offer new 100%. services and offer new things that are appealing to the eye. That's why they say change your website after X amount of time, you know, tweak it up, make it, you know, maybe change the logo because people need to see new stuff. Even if it has the same meaning behind it, it has right. to be appealing to the eye. I think, you know, Which is- yeah. So one of the things that, you know, I see on TikTok, I see ads on TikTok all the time from the organization TikTok saying, hey, if you're not getting, are you stuck with 300 views on TikTok? <laughs> if you want more more TikTok views, buy ads on TikTok to get more views on your videos. Right. And that is absolutely the the wrong thing you should do because it just goes to show you that if you don't, if companies don't work with experts, they will spend their time and their money they will spend tens of thousands of dollars and arguably hundreds of hours over many years doing it wrong. Right. Until they figure out the way to do it correctly, which could have all happened many years ago had you gone directly to an expert. Right. So like when you see those ads on TikTok that say you can get more views on your videos, ignore that because you don't need more views on your videos. No. You need the right people to see your videos so that they buy from you. And so when we talk about content posting, there's a there's a framework for content posting. And I would argue that for most businesses, TikTok is the right place to be, including ours. We're a business-to-business services company. And we post on TikTok between five and seven times a week. We amplify the content or we syndicate the content across LinkedIn, X, um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. And there's three types of content that are really valuable and they serve different purposes. And again, the common theme here is everything you do has to serve a purpose. Right. You're gonna If you're going to run Facebook ads as just a tangent, you need to know why you're running Facebook ads. What's the purpose that Facebook serves and what's the purpose of any other channel you're doing? Right. The answer should never be, we're going to run Facebook ads because we created a post and we want people to see the post. That's not the right answer. That's, yeah. that's the wrong way of doing it. The answer should be strategically, it makes sense for X and Y reason, because we're going to start more consumer journeys. We're going to get more people interested and we're going to convert people on Google. That's an example of, of, of sophisticated, smart, prudent, frugal ways to spend your advertising budget. But going back to content, there's three different types of content that we recommend clients create. If you want attention and you have time, meaning you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on advertising, but you want to create the content for relatively inexpensively, create content for TikTok. The reason TikTok is the primary place that we recommend is because it is the town square. It is prime time programming for you 24 hours a day. The value in it is, is, is your consumer behavior. The fact that at night, your chances are a lot of the people listening are going to be scrolling TikTok when they're going to Mm -hmm. sleep. Yeah. Or during the day or when they need a break, you're scrolling TikTok. So as a consumer, you understand how valuable it is to be on that platform. Now think of yourself as the business person. You want your organic content, the stuff that you don't have to pay for, but the content you create, the videos you create, you want those videos to be inserted in the stream of the people who you want to sell to. So TikTok is a really good platform to get your content, your videos in front of those people. Now, there's three types of content you share. Um, depending on your business, this could be different, but this is what we do for B2B. We start with value videos. We need to demonstrate that we are experts in our field. A value video would be um, you know, seven ways to optimize your Google Ads account so you can make more out of your investment. And then we go through seven tips. Right. This, this demonstrates that you know what you're talking about. 
The next type of video is going to be a meet them where they're at video. Meet them where they're at video can also be called a problem video. I'm not going to give you solutions. I'm going to communicate to you that I understand your problems. I understand arguably better than you do, because I'm thinking about this all day, the challenges you have that make you the right person to buy from us. Right. You know, you're not seeing the growth of your business. You think advertising is too hard and it you think Google ads or Facebook ads don't work for my business, but yet they work for most businesses. Right. Like you have you have had bad experiences with advertising. And as a result, you don't you think advertising, you think you know, av- ad- people in the advertising business are snake oil salesmen because everyone, their mother can be an advertising agency. Cause all you, you know, right? So uh, yeah. addressing all these challenges and how you know. So the reason these videos are important is because I'm not giving you a solution. The solution is me, by the way. Right. You should work with an expert because you're not going to waste time and money. But exactly. people don't realize that and won't trust me when I say that. So I have to demonstrate that I understand your problems. Yeah. So the entirety of the video minus like the last few part, a few seconds are going to be basically like, here are the problems you're facing and here's why you're facing the problems. Right. I'm not giving you the solution. That demonstrates that you understand the customer and they will that will resonate with people. It won't be as interesting as the value videos because mm-hmm. you're giving away a lot in the value videos, but the meet them where the ad videos are far more interesting to people because it, 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 you're speaking to the challenges that people face. The last video are going to be adjacency videos. Yeah. So adjacency videos are the wider scope of content you can create that might appeal to larger audiences that are adjacent to your business. My business is advertising. So I'll talk about marketing. Search engine optimization is a yeah. marketing practice, but not it's not advertising. Right. I might talk about AI sales. I might talk about you know how businesses thrive, whatever the case might be. It's much broader. It will appeal to a larger audience. And as a result, you have a greater possibility of going viral further attracting more more people to your to your sphere of influence. Right. With these three types of videos, you create the content, you amplify it across the channel, the social platforms that are relevant to you, and there's an incredible amount of benefit that comes out of that. The first is that if you're in B2B where relationships matter dramatically, you're going to reignite your relationships because just like you're on TikTok, the people who you've connected with over the last 15 years are also on TikTok. Right. Um, and as a result, like I've reconnected with people from like, I haven't talked to for 15 years and it creates business opportunities. Yeah. Number two, you're going to learn how to talk about your business more effectively, which right. is incredibly valuable. Yeah. Your sales pitch will get tighter. Mm-hmm. You'll understand the products and services that people are more interested in because you'll see which videos, re- you know, get more views based right. on, what you talk about. So your sales pitch will get tighter. And number three, um, it leads to creating more relationships that didn't exist before by virtue of the fact that you're on these platforms and you get more business opportunities that way. Right. Mm -hmm. So all of this is a virtuous cycle of attention grabbing that turns into consideration, that turns into sales. But another way, people need to know you they need to like you and they need to trust you. Yes. And by looking at the content that you're creating on TikTok and then amplifying it, you'll understand which is your best pieces of content. And then then you amplify that with ads if you have something to sell. Right. Right. You don't just make ads and you hope they work. You you vet it hundreds of videos and you pick the three that are the best. Right. Now the people who are listening to this may say, Well, I don't want to get on TikTok because I don't I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. I'm going to look yeah. bad or I'm not going to look good. And here's, here's the solution for that. No one's going to see your videos if they're bad. <laughs> your first 10 videos are going to be horrible. <laughs> like the lighting is going to be bad. Like just, just for context, if you're watching this, this is like raccoon eyes. Yeah. 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 The uh-huh. Deep shadows. I just got these. Li- I've been in business for 20 years. My business for 10 years. I just got these lights. Like, uh, three weeks ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. I had other lights and I stopped. I did. So the point is you're constantly evolving. This is not a question of, you have to be, um, um, I'm thinking of like Mary Hart from like entertainment tonight. Yeah, you, don't yeah, have to yeah, be a, yeah. you know, you don't yeah, have to be exactly. that person, right? You just have to get out there because the content, the story, the insights that you have yeah. are going to be valuable. And if you're selling a product for e-commerce or if you have a restaurant, 
you're going to find your own way of communicating that people like. And by the way, people love amazing photos and videos of like pizza and chicken Parmesan and all the good stuff. I'm a foodie. I love that stuff. Like right. whatever you are doing, whether you're selling flowers or yoga or massage or you're selling a product, any of that stuff, you can find ways to make it interesting, especially yeah. if you have a personality, because everyone has a personality. There's something interesting about all of us. Exactly. And what makes businesses sell is the people behind the product. Right. That's the value there. So be yeah. yourself, get on video, and that's how you grow your business without having to spend money on ads. I think that's amazing. You know, it, it's so true. It's so true. And I, I also feel like, you know, when you are not salesy in your, in your, if you go on TikTok or if you go on a reel or if you do a YouTube video, there's so many people trying to do like their own info commercial. And it's like, oh my goodness, you know, that is not a way to gain people's trust. That's not a right. way, you know, people are not stupid. They hear, they see it and, you know, they need to trust you. They need to believe in you, just like you had mentioned. And I think, you know, when you, when you do these videos and when you go on these reels, you know, you you have to be teaching them something valuable, giving them something that they need, the audience that's interested in you, that you could relate to, that will purchase your service. Give them something valuable that they can use in their everyday life or their everyday business, and they will appreciate and trust you more so, I think. You know, um, you know. what are your feelings on that? Because I- No you know, infomercials. Yeah. I mean, look, if you, if you have to create five videos a day, uh, five videos a week, I mean, you're going to run out of infomercials to make, right? <laughs> you're going to want to, you, you're going to want to demonstrate who you are, what you sell, what you do, but like the humanity behind it. People respond, people buy from people. They don't buy from companies, right? They, yeah. they, they want people to make them feel a certain way, be, be more, you know, be smarter, be entertained or provide some level of utility. So you've got to right. decide what type of, what you're selling here. Like, Starbucks, for example, Starbucks is selling coffee, but they're really selling an experience. You walk in, it smells a certain way. You yeah. get that delight of like the coffee hit that you're looking for. It's yeah. you, you can hang out. It feels cozy, especially in the winter time. Right. So you're selling coffee, and even if you take it to go, you you still they've been around long enough where you 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 get that m magical cozy feeling by drinking that the latte that's yeah. just made perfectly right. So Starbucks is selling a, an experience. Right. Oh, for um, sure. So you've you've got to decide on what's the su the subtlety of what you're selling. Like I'm selling time. I'm selling time because for business owners, like you, there's probably like 25 other things that you should be doing that's higher value work for you. Yeah. Than running ads. Why? Because you're not good at running ads. I am, and my right. team is. I mean, that's just the reality of it. And it's yeah. not because you can't be good. It's because you haven't put in 20 years into the business like I have. Exactly. If I put 20 years into being a mechanic, I'd probably be decent at it. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> right? But I put zero years into being a mechanic. So if you give me a hammer and a car, I'm going to damage it. Yeah. So the goal here is you've got to figure out what's good for you and then exactly. outsource everything you can as long as it financially makes sense. And, you know, for us, like we start at like $1,500 a month for advertising and we go up to like half a million dollars usually for our clients. But I mean, it's really accessible at $1,500 a month to take 100% of that work off your plate so you don't have to manage it every single day because you've got account people to look at. You've got manufacturing, customer service, production, mail, all the things that go in, you know, invoicing, accounts receivable, dealing with your accountant, all that stuff yeah. is probably more important than you figuring out advertising. There's plenty of people who know advertising and marketing in the space. And the way you know you're talking to someone who's smart about what they're talking about, there's kind of like three, four things. Number one, they they have experience. And when mm -hmm. I say experience, I don't mean a course or a certificate. Yeah. But, I mean, look, that's fine. You can do courses and certificates, but the reality is you can't replace five, 10, 20 years of experience. You just um. can't. Definitely can't. It's it's more valuable. It, the experience is way more valuable than a certificate that says, okay, you passed this class. Legit. Yeah. Look at experience. Go to LinkedIn. How how long were they a crypto expert three years ago and now they're in the advertising business? You know, like <laughs> what's the what's the the tone of their career? Exactly. The second thing you, you want to look for is transparency. It's far more the the best clients we have understand what we do. Right. 
there's so many agencies where they try to keep you from understanding the knowledge. Yes. But that's, to me, that's the, like, that, that's the reverse of what you should be doing. I want our clients to understand because then they will see how hard we're working for them. Yeah. And how much effort we're go is going into making their business grow. Yes. And that they'll realize that if you want to do it right, there's absolutely no way they can do it effectively on their own or even with an in-house team or even by working with an influencer or working with a, um, a, a freelancer from Upwork. It's just, right? So then you have <clears throat> structures of teams. Success for, for us comes from standard operating procedure. That's been the clearing for growth in our business. Yeah. Senior people in our team. Um, redundancy. You don't have one person doing one thing and you hope they don't make a mistake. You have that person who has peer reviews. Right. You have supervisory reviews. You have our director who's looking at campaigns. You have our chief operating officer who's looking at the big things. Right. The macro level things. And you have an account person who has answers to the questions you have before you even have the question. Right. And we're looking at your campaigns to look for success as well from a different lens. Like, are, are we achieving your business goals? Yes. So you need redundancy. So you want a lot more of that transparency. You want experience and you want people who demonstrate that they that they have the process down and that they know what they're talking about. Yeah. And there's plenty of, there's very, there's many people like me in the marketplace who are talented um, the reason why we're in this business is I, you know, I spent 10 years doing corporate media buying for like Sony, Disney, Capcom, Bacardi, Toshiba, PetSmart, City National Bank, Mercury mm -hmm. Auto Insurance. And I was like, this is cool, but man, this would be powerful for the small and mid-sized business. Oh, for needs, sure. Right. Yeah. And, and that's our, our mission. Our mission is to create freedom. I've created the freedom for myself. The yeah. freedom is not unlimited amounts of money. Freedom for me is freedom of time and freedom of like freedom of money from the perspective. Like I don't have to worry about um, getting extra bacon on my burger. I'm not looking at the cost of the bacon. Right. Right. Like yeah. it's, it's the freedom to live my life and, and not worry. And right. It's of time. It's the ability to work on the work that I like to do. Exactly. And I want everyone, I want our employees to have that experience. I want yeah. them to be paid the right amount. I want them to have the freedom. We all work from remotely from home, right? Mm -hmm. Work yes. a daytime pajamas, right? It's, <laughs> it's, it's jogging pants that are comfy and a hoodie that's yeah. comfy, right? Because uh -huh. smart, talented people know how to get the work done in a hoodie. They don't have to be dressed in a button down to get the job done. Right. Right. So, and arguably, I would say that people who work remotely work far harder than people who work in an office because you don't have that one or two hour drive, let's say three hour drive both ways yeah. um, that totally changes the day. Oh, sure. So it's really important to have an opportunity to find the right people, the people who you vibe with, the people yeah. with the right culture, the people who you're going to like talking to because those people are going to be the ones who are going to work hard for you because there's just mutual uh, admiration and mutual respect. Right. Exactly. And I don't think people realize either the time that goes into it. Like a lot of times when I would speak to people, you know, business people, they think that everything is like one, two, three, that, you know, these, these videos that you make and all these things that you do and all these things that you create um, for clients, they, they don't realize their hours and hours of work. You know, it's not, it's, it's a thought out process. It has to be done a specific way in a specific sequence. And the, you have to use just the right words and you have to use just the right SEO and everything has to be perfect in order to get a positive response. And it has to be a process. It has to be a process. And I, I think business people, even small business people, because I think the large business people are so busy, they don't even pay attention. They just want to see results. But the small businesses and the medium sized businesses want to see those results real fast, but they have to realize it's a process and a lot of hours go into it on the other side. They don't Legit. realize that. Yeah. Legit. Yeah. Now, AI, we were talking about AI earlier. Now, AI is like the biggest trend. It's like, go, you know, just like every other trend and every other thing that comes through, it's like, it's on fire. People are using it for everything right now. But like, I always feel like, you know, there is a good way to use it and it could be a bad way to use it. Like, you know, AI, it could be a very useful tool if it's used the proper way. Now, yeah. how, what are your feelings about AI and, and how do you incorporate it in the advertising world that you feel is beneficial and that gets results? Um, so, um, 
look, I we look at AI as an acceleration tool. We take 20 to 60 minutes of work and we pop it into chat GPT and we do research. Like we'll yeah. like when we're creating outlines for search engine optimization, for example, we're going to um understand the seven bullet points that we need to cover in an article. Yeah. But we hand type it out ourselves. It's our thoughts, our language. Exactly. You cannot put chat GPT or AI content into a web page. Google will in eventually yes. um, penalize those sites. Oh, it's 100%. good for research. It's good for organizing thoughts. And it's good for giving people back 20 to 60 minutes on any given project. A hundred percent. Now I know, you know, your time is really valuable and you're very busy today. So can you just like wrap it up and just give us like a couple of good takeaways for people just to understand everything we talked about, some valuable points just to keep in their minds. Absolutely. So targeting on meta broad age, gender, and location, you need to be cycling through creative monthly and keep the winners. You, you, you're not you're not running the same seven ads for like three months. You're cycling through the winners. So you get one ad a month that's going to be valuable. Yeah. And then you cycle through that again and again. Um, work with experts. Save your time. Save your money. Um, because a shortcut is really a long cut. And it's going to take cost you far more right. uh, than it's going to give you back. And then um, I would say use AI liberally. Just don't. It, it has to be moderated by humans. That's the yes. ultimate part here. I agree. Now, you know, where can people get in touch with you? Because you've gotten me so excited between your personality and your knowledge. <laughs> I'm ready to book with you. I'm ready to have okay, great. You my ads and everything. Yeah, I'm like really excited here. So, you know, for people who, you know, really need someone like you and have a smaller, medium sized business and they really need your help, where can they find you? Yeah. So our website is brillmedia.co, B as in boy, R I L L media.co. Hit the start button, reach out to us, and you'll be able to schedule a time to talk to me directly. Oh, you know, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, for Robert, for coming on the show. I hope we'll see you soon at a later date because you have such great knowledge. And we didn't even tap some of the, you know, you, we had a whole lot, a bunch of topics that he, <laughs> he could have told us about and gave us some amazing information, but it's too many to tap in one session. So, you know, maybe we'll see you sometime in the future. I hope so. Awesome. And, you know, thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been Thanks. an amazing time. Thank you so Thanks, much. Thanks, Stacey. I really appreciate it. All right. You have a great day.